Okay, can we see now your presentation? Yeah, it looks good to me. Uh, I can see it. Um, good. Okay, you let me know if you uh, want to go down or whatever. Yeah, you, pretty you simple. Charge. This is real simple. The, to give you a little bit of background of what this is, this is the, the match preview. Uh, during the week, uh, for example, on Monday, we would give the players information about the previous match uh, that the opponent played and some of their key players. This document is what would be presented to, to our team uh, right before our final training before the match. So, for example, if we have a match on Saturday, this would be presented Friday prior to the, the final training. Um, so the, the players have already seen video on the opponent. They've already seen you know, the, the details that they needed through the week. This is just a, the last bit of information before we prepare for the, the final meeting. So if you go ahead and go down, uh, the first uh, page, this goes the opponent's last lineup. And this talks a little bit about who's in what position. Uh, the yellow lines show a little bit of the, their movement, how, how they're looking to, to work. The, you know, basic form, ba basic uh, system of play. And if you want to go down a little bit, Juan, this was, uh, again, like I said, the, this was their last match. That was against Trenova. Now, if we keep going down, this is kind of how they were looking to play. Um, as you can see, it wasn't a whole lot of buildup. It was very direct. And so the, the, the backs were looking to play it into the channels very direct or they would play to the striker because the striker was a really big boy. And what he would do is either hold the ball up or he would flick it on for the, the wingers to run past. Uh -huh. So, again, the, the, it was um, a very, like, old school direct, you know, hit it into the channel and fight or hit it to the striker who would either hold it up or flick it on for the guys to run by. Uh, this team – the. Uh, this team was a very experienced and older team. I think the average age of this team was 29 or 30. Oh, wow. So, but they had previously played in the top league and they had just been relegated the season before. So they had really good players that were used to playing in the highest level, but they, um, they stayed together when they got relegated to the, the second level. So uh, this was a, a really experienced group. So again, if you want to go to the next slide, they, so they never played through the number 10, always was that diagonal into the target areas or to the target player? Yeah, th th that was their biggest thing. Their, their wingers were extremely fast, and their, their number, the, the, the purple area right there, that was the, the, the center forward, and he was nearly like 195 tall. So his, oh, his okay. thing, flicking balls on, and, and you know, if he couldn't flick it on to a runner, he would hold it up for a moment. And, and wait for the support to come. So it was a very direct team. If you look here, when we talk about the strengths, uh, the team is very organized uh, in attack and, and defense. The target areas behind or are outside backs. Uh, the strike will look to flick or knock the ball back to midfield. The team looks to play a lot of cross into the box. Um, and again, when you talk, when the, the team will drop and get numbers behind the ball if we have a really slow attack. Um, again, as we talked about here with the weakness, as you can read, they, this was their third match in eight days. Wow. So for, for them, we knew that we had to kind of keep the tempo up and play a little bit uh, quicker. Uh, as you said, the, their playing style, there was not much variation. It was very predictable, and we knew what was going to happen. It was just trying to stop what they were going to do. You know, so again, even though we knew what was coming, they were really good at doing it. Wow. So again, we had to be prepared. They had been playing that, you know, I'd say the core of the team had been together several years. They, uh, you know, they knew each other. They they played together. So the as a whole, it was a, a bit more of a, a challenge for us. Um, I, my team was a a combination of players from Slovakia, players from Brazil. It was a, a new group. We had just won promotion, so it was uh, you know we, we we were kind of the new kids on the block, and they were the the old experienced veteran wow. team. Oh, it was a bit of a clash. And, and at this time, uh, we were equal on points both at the top of the league. So it, it was a really big match. So uh, if you want to go down to the, the next slide, I believe this is where we talk about our team. And this is, would be our opening 11. So, again, as you can see, the system 4-2-3-1. 
Uh, again, if you want to keep going down, this gives us a little bit of what I'm expecting from our players as far as movement. You know, like I said, I, I try to keep it so that the outside backs and, and it could get around. The, the wingers would, would come into the middle sometimes to, to create space for the outside backs. The, our, you know, players number four and 14, they kind of sat a little bit and protected the, the, the back two. You know, one of them, if one went forward, the other one would stay. And so we try to keep a good defensive shape even in our attack. So, again, any questions about that? Do you have a 21, so the two wide players um, attacking were Brazilian and number 10 were Brazilians? Yeah, we, like, like here, the 11, the 21, the 10, the 4 were all Brazilian. Were, and, were the, those two wing players quite high on the pitch and you have um, a little problem like we watch from Juventus? Funny because it's a similar, although Juventus was three on the back. Um, yeah. similar potentially could be threat for your team those pockets between the fullbacks and the wing players the, the wing players are going up too much exactly like for us the, as you see if you go down a little bit further on one of the slides I talk about how we play and so when, when the opponent has the ball uh, let's see here we go when we lose the ball we're pressing as high as possible all right. So again, we want to take away any chance of uh, them being able to, to play into those pockets. But if you go down to the next slide. If they break our shape, then we drop and, and then we, we try to make it super compact. So as I talked about last week, it, I don't like to defend in that middle block. Uh, like I don't like having the opponent to have options in front of us or behind us so here if they broke our shape we dropped and retreated uh, again from from top to bottom the team shape was 30 meters maximum and and we, we tried to get a, a very compact team shape so that we kept them outside of our shape um and, and as i talk about here work as a team not as individuals so again we, we made sure that if we didn't win it up high we slowed the game down so that we can get our numbers back behind the ball as you said, the, if we were to play an open game, there would be spaces in between our, our outside backs and our wingers. So that was one of the areas that we tried to do the most to prevent. And with the way this opponent played, they were very direct. They tried to play that long ball in behind us. So we either had to press right away or we had to drop. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to get caught in the middle so that they could play the ball behind us. Were they really good as well on set pieces? Uh, yeah, again, it was an older, experienced team, so they were they were pretty well um, drilled on it. As you see, as we'll go forward, we'll talk a little bit about set pieces coming up. So, okay. don't want to anticipate. Yeah, you keep pulling yes. down. Yep. So again, this is a little bit like for when we can't open small. This was our our long opening. So when the goalkeeper had to kick the ball, we had certain matches matchups that we were looking for. So like our number four and our number 11 were good in the air. And then we asked our number five and 21 to break the line. So again, this was a way for us to, to when we did take the long openings, you know, when the goalkeeper had to kick long, this is what we did. We, we made the, the shape really tight and we tried to, you know, either win the first ball or be in a position to win the second ball. So again, if we go down to the next slide, Juan. These are the, the keys to success. And again, when we talk about our team, you know, you have the, the certain sort of things. Um, we're looking to, to press during the match. If we go, we all must go. If we stay, we all have to stay. Um, you know, stay compact, defending 30 meters from top to bottom, you know, the, the line of pressure. We talk about the attacking each player's role inside of it. The, Zoli, it, it was our, our left back and Pixie was our right back. Those are their, their nicknames. So, again, the, the idea was look to get forward, you know, get, get into the attack, look to overlap. But, again, key point, don't both do it on the same, same time. <laughs> you know, here, here's ba very basic things. You hear the key points, organize about set pieces, you know, know your role, do your job. And then we talk a little bit about the defending, about setting up quickly, seeing the man, seeing the ball, uh, mark the most dangerous men. But, the, again, you see the overall key points. If you go down a little bit further now to the next slide, 
Well, before I go forward, Juan, if you look, I try to keep it really brief. Like, again, this is the last meeting before our, uh, our final training session. So, yeah. again, I don't want to go into too much because we've already spent the previous four days preparing the players. This, mm -hmm. The idea here is just quick bullet points so everybody understands what we're looking to do. Now, here's our set pieces. Um, we have the attacking set pieces. Again, each player has their role. They, they know their movement. We, we rehearse this. And again, as if you just want to keep, you can go down these slide by slide. It's quite easy. We have the various attacking set pieces. Then we have the, the various uh, defending set pieces. Um, during the, the week, we, we train these uh, all the time. And then during the match, we have the same information with us on an iPad or uh, on oh, like flip okay, cards. Okay, that's tricky. Yeah. Yep. Do you do man marking or do you do a combination of sonal and man marking inside the box? Well, it's interesting because I've always been a huge like supporter of a combination of zone and man marking. And when I went from Finland to Slovakia, I tried to do that. And these players there for their whole life had always been working on defending in a zone. So I tried to change it in the first three, four, five matches. We tried it and it didn't work. The combination of zone and, and man marking. So I gave the guys a chance. I said, okay, show me how you guys want to do it. They set it up. We did three matches without giving a goal on a set piece. So we switched to zone marking and, and stuck with it the whole year. But again, for me as a coach, it was very important to listen to the players. I had several experienced guys in the team. This is how they, they, they were comfortable doing it. And, and it worked. I mean, it, it worked really well and we were able to, to, you know, build from there. But again, as a coach, I had to listen to my players and see what was best for them. So maybe well, that again, was a lesson for you to, um, about that, you know, when it's typical someone come to a new club or whatever, I want to change things. And maybe it kind of like you say, well, maybe I listen to the player first and then I try uh, rather than the other way around. Well, so we do my way, it doesn't work. Then you listen to the players. Yeah, well, again, I was very fortunate it, here in Slovakia, like our, our two center backs. Uh, one had played for the Slovak national team when he was younger. He played in the Polish, top Polish league, played in top Dutch league. I uh, had another one who played in the top uh, Czech Republic League. So guys had been around, you know, and they were at the, the end of their career. So, you know, in their, their early 30s, you know, and they were experienced. They had their way of playing. And, you know, I'm sure if we would have drilled it and went over and over and over, we could have changed the, the, the way we did it. But to me, it was a much easier change to say, okay, let's switch to the zone marking. The players were comfortable with that. It was a, an easier way to, to do it. And we, we, we didn't concede matches, which was a huge uh, – didn't concede goals and matches off of set pieces, which was a huge confidence boost. So when we did that, it was like, okay, the guys are feeling good with this. Let's go with it. You know, like I said, I, I, I'm sure if I was a bit more stubborn, I probably could have said, no, we're going to do it my way and, and, and really focused on that. But it, this was working the other way, so let's leave it – Leave it alone. No, that's a good point. Yep. And again, just going forward a little bit. Um, this was, you know, defending off of wide free kicks. Uh, on the right side, the left side, who was in the wall, who was the front man, who was for second balls. Um, so, so again, we did this on the right side and on the left side. So, again, try to make sure that the players knew where they would be in, in the zone. Yeah. One of the things that's quite, quite interesting, like, like if you take a look real quick, um, the number 20, the number three, the number 33, the number five, I try to set that up. That's like the back four. We try to keep them in shape as much as possible. Uh, uh, so that, you know, I don't like personally when the players switch and go here and here, because then when you win the ball, you know, your left back is 30 meters out of spot or, or, or you know, the, the, the right winger is not in position, you know, like for example, on the, the, the wall side, the number 21 is the, the left winger. So he's on his side in the wall. So and on the opposite side, you know, it's, it, it's the same thing. You know, the, the, the 14's out there who's the winger on, on that side. 
So again, the idea is to make sure that we at least keep balance for when we do win the ball. And you didn't leave any guy on the middle third attacking third, so everyone pretty much was defending on your defending third? Yeah, we dropped everybody back just ah. to be secure. Yeah, well, you oh, said they were, they were quite experienced and, and good on the air, so you need to be, be careful. So. Yes, yes. And again, just going forward, the last little details, I think a, a few more of the, the set pieces. Again, this is when we have a wall, who's in the wall, who's taking the men, very simple. Um, and the last little bit, I think, is I, we set this up. This is the team responsibilities. If somebody's taking a penalty, who's taking the, the, the free kicks, who's taking the corners, who's in the wall. So all of these uh, slides that I have, what we also have is I have them uh, laminated and we have them outside of the or inside the, the changing room with yes. the same information on there so that before the match, the players can check the, you know, check the papers so that they can see exactly where they are. You know, as I say, we went over it through the week. You know, the guys know exactly what they're doing, but we also have it on the wall in the changing room for the guys to take a look at. We also have a version of it on the iPad or, or on the, the, the papers on the bench. So in case you make a substitute, you can cross off one number who's coming out and put the new number in, and the guys can see it automatically. So that's pretty much it. And as you see on the last slide, as always, you got to tell the guys when to, be at the, when to be at the stadium, when is the, the, the team meeting, when's the warm-up, all the basic information. So again, this is this was used in the last preparation prior to the match, if that makes sense. How much flexibility you will have in this plan? About because sometimes we see uh, maybe not so much on the penalty, but sometimes free kicks. Let's say we have two or three, and maybe that player doesn't have much confidence, and then maybe one of the players is having a great game. And then it's just going and taking the free kick, you know, and then maybe score or not. Yeah. But sometimes you see that they are really confident, like, you know, you could see it. So you give them freedom in a way to work in themselves and making their own decision or, or not so much? Yeah, well, if you look, like the, the number 10 was a right-footed player. The number 21 is the left-footed player. So for me, we always try to put two guys on the ball. So if, if one of those two is the one who's going to take it, um, the, the issue that I have sometimes with changing players around or, or having different guys do it is we've worked on this in training. And so, you know, we know who's the best at it. You know, I understand if somebody's having a good match and they're feeling, you know, feeling the juice and want to, want to do it. But as you know, in every match, I never, there's more guys that want to take it than that don't want to take it. So if you <laughs> leave that open, there's going to be a queue of nine people lined up to take it. So that's why we kind of say, okay, hey, let's pick the specific guys. You know, again, if, for example, one of the players takes a, a knock, you know, like the get, gets hit and they're, they're not feeling well, then, there, of course, there's a, another person that could do it. And we know who that is in, in training because they've worked on it before. Or, you know, I just – I try to make it as simple as possible because the more names and numbers that you put up there, the more there's going to be guys, I don't want to say fighting each other for it, but, you know, like let's give guys their specific role and this is what they work on. So that that's kind of how I like to do it. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. I mean, we, we, we did talk about um, quite a lot and was a lot of information, but at the same time, between both um, – presentation, I could see some really simple stuff. Um, it is more information than probably um, a normal, maybe junior game or beginner's coach, but main information and tasks or things that players need to do that they are basic, isn't it? Yeah, well, again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. You know, the, the, the biggest thing, and I could say this, you know, I work with some of the, the players who played in the World Cup, and the the more you keep it simple, the easier it is for, for them to understand. The more complex a coach makes it, sometimes the player's are like, hey, man, this is too much. You know, like give them specific details, give them exactly what you want and how it relates to their position and, and how it relates to the team. And most players will, will you know, absorb it and, and be able to, to put it in action right away. When you 
I think sometimes in the coaching schools and some of this stuff, we overthink things and we, we write a lot of stuff just to write, you know, players, as they talk about, you know, you can give a, a 15 minute speech and they might remember one thing or two things. So it makes no sense to put a 50 page document about the opponent when the players might just look at it and go, okay, great, put it down. You know, so let's find the, the, the small details, keep it simple so that they, that they know exactly what affects their match. Yeah, no, that's it. All right, Mike, always a pleasure talking to you. Um, so, yeah, uh, thank you very much for your time again. I hope everyone enjoyed our third video. Uh, hey, I saw well, you uh, back at training, so it's good. Yeah, I was just about to ask you, how's everything going? I saw the post that you guys are now back out uh, on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, so we are back on the pitch, 20 people. Um, so slowly getting there, hopefully in three weeks, the um, contact sport come back. So yeah, looking forward that the numbers stay zero or really low. Um, they're just easy, the restriction every week, or three weeks, we will be in phase three, I think. So yeah, looking forward for the, the winter season to kick off. Oh, excellent, excellent, happy to hear it. <laughs> Take care. Thank you as always for having me on the the you know podcast or webinar. I don't know what what what's the right <laughs> word to call it, but thank you for having me as a guest. I really appreciate it, and, and looking forward to the next time, my friend. Thank you, Mike. Have a lovely day, William. Take care, my friend. Right, cheers. Bye. Bye.